hello. Uh, my name is Sigi Amft. Uh, I'm uh, the founder of T plus A Electroacoustics. We are a German company and uh, I founded the company in 1978. Uh, at the beginning, uh, of course, the company was small and we started building loudspeakers, uh, especially transmission line loudspeakers or active speakers with uh, feedback systems. The reason why we are here now is that we introduce uh, today uh, the newest model of our Solitaire line, uh, which is the Solitaire S540. And that's the speaker here? That's the speaker you can see here. And uh, the line now in total is f f 40 years old. And uh, one really typical uh, part is that we are always using special tweeters and a special arrangements for our mid-range systems. Uh, over the years we have developed uh, these principles and in the first models we used uh, electrostatic tweeters and um, for a relatively long time the last generation was built in 2011 and uh, now we have decided to convert this technology into magnetostatic treaters. Okay, what, what we would maybe call planar magnetic? Yeah. Okay. Uh, these drivers are uh, planar magnetic speakers, no longer planar electrostatic speakers. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they, are, they form a classical line source. Parallel to that, you can see that we have a line array of seven mid-range drivers. So together, this setup uh, creates a perfect cylindric wave, uh, which has a lot of advantages uh, regarding the uh, sound reproduction and to avoid reflections of, uh, in the room. That means indirect sound, which we don't want to have. Line arrays and line sources concentrate their sound directly in front of the speaker. And this means we can avoid many, many of the faults we have in normal listening rooms because uh, the listening person only hears the direct sound and not reflected sound. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, planar magnetic tweeter? Yeah. Is this an original design? Is this something new? Or? Yeah, it's, uh, this design, uh, in fact, is brand new. Okay, the idea. Uh, the technical idea is the same uh, as we have had for uh, electrostatic treaters. Mm -hmm. mm, but they get problematic, especially when you think of Asia, humidity, temperature. Uh, oh. An electrostatic uh, driver always has very high voltages. And this uh, may be a problem with dust and humidity. Mm, so we had the idea to change this principle. And uh, the reason behind that is that we have developed four years ago our first line of magnetostatic planar headphones, the Solitaire P, they are called. And uh, this was quite a big development, but we learned a lot about uh, the right uh, kind of magnets, how to use them, the right kind of uh, cone material and the right kind of uh, adding the voice call to such a system. When we saw how well these headphones work, I had the idea, why don't we do the same principle for a tweeter? Mm -hmm. Of course, the, uh, mm, the task is different. A headphone does not need such a high uh, sound pressure level, mm -hmm. as for example a speaker does. But uh, we managed with the right design of magnet systems and of uh, the, the cone, we managed to achieve a, a very high sound pressure level. This tweeter can do easily much more than 125 dB. And, and just to understand, is this actually an array of multiple drivers? No. Or are these, are these strips just structural? No, th this is only uh, just to stiffen the structure. In fact, the cone is from here to here. That's okay. one cone. That's a single cone, piece. And you, you can see the small lines, which is uh, yeah, something like the voice call. It's the mm -hmm. aluminium coating, uh, round about uh, 10 meter long, which is uh, coated to the uh, cone material. Mm -hmm. And so the advantage is that this is really a line source. That means each point 
of this uh, membrane is uh, driven by the same force and by the same signal. And this creates the classical uh, line array. And then the magnets are on yeah. the rear, so this the is a, a single-ended design. Yeah. Yeah. Magnets are on the rear, they, they are damped, of course, in a closed cabinet because we don't uh, need a bipolar system. But uh, uh, due to the length of the entire system, we only have very, very little movement of, of the membrane and, of course, uh, no distortion. And uh, we can create extremely high sound pressures. Okay. So that's, that's one of the yeah, key developments for this speaker now, and it replaces in full our former electrostatic tweeters. I want to talk about the uh, mid-range drivers okay. in a minute. Why, why oval? It's very important that they are oval. In okay. our older applications, we used to have round ones. But imagine this is 10 centimeters. It would mean the baffle is much wider and the distance between uh, tweeter and mid-range is wider. So the idea was, uh, as we wanted to uh, create a perfect uh, line array. Uh, we're using seven drivers, which are very close together, but which are relatively slim. That means the radiation in the uh, horizontal, horizontal axis is very yes. good. And the concentration... What, what is this dimension? The lateral uh, dimension? It's uh, um, six and a half centimeters. Okay. Yeah, to 11 centimeters. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other advantage is that this line array concentrates the sound uh, directly uh, to the listener. Mm -hmm. So this yeah, is so vertical dispersion yeah. in both the tweeter and yeah. the mid-range is, is limited, so you don't have a yeah. lot of reflections fl from floor and ceiling. Floor and ceiling. And yeah. in fact, as line arrays and line sources bundle the, the sound as well uh, in the horizontal direction, more than uh, one speaker uh, alone would do. So this is as well something which we like, that means we reduce reflections from the side walls as well. Okay. And is, it, uh, is the um, radiation pattern asymmetrical left and right, or is it pretty much symmetrical? Uh, now, it's, it is due to the baffle and where it's situated. Uh, it shows a little bit more to the center of the yeah, speaker. Yeah, so it lobes yeah. a little bit to the, the right. center. So okay. this is why we have a left and a right speaker. Mm -hmm. Another point is that uh, the uh, tweeter, of course, as it creates frequencies up to 50,000 hertz, or could even do more, is the faster system than the mid-range drivers. So the acoustical axis is always bended to the slower system. And this okay. is why we made the design this way. All right. The advantage of such a system is that it is very fast because the mid-range drivers don't have to move. We have seven pieces with a strong magnet system in a closed cabinet. That means we have a very good transient response and it's a very fast system. And a planar electrostatic or magnetostatic tweeter is fast anyway. So this is a very fast system. And very often in such designs, you have a problem to match uh, the base response. Because if you don't, uh, let me say, design your base system properly, it's too slow. Uh, the reason now what we did to avoid this is that we have a closed cabinet design. That means it's, it's a sealed cabinet. Sealed box. Mm -hmm. It's a sealed box. We have tuned uh, the drivers to a very low resonance frequency. And um, the uh, impulse response or transit response is absolutely fast and correct. So both systems match very well. With so many mid-ranges, can you, do you lower the crossover point? Yeah. Okay. The crossover point is now uh, 180 hertz. Yeah, so... Th that's my favorite for designing and constructing loudspeakers because uh, I think it is very important that the human voice is covered by one speaker only. Mm -hmm. that so means, where's the crossover to the tweeter? Uh, 1800. Okay. Yeah. It works perfect. And um, the advantage is simply that we have no phase shifts in uh, the voice area. Let me say, that means from 200 hertz to 2000, mm -hmm. it's really uh, one speaker, or let me say the speaker array, but the speaker array, it, it behaves like one speaker. Because if, if you have a certain distance, the crit critical distance, we have a planar wave created by them. So uh, this really reacts that we have 
all, all this very for listening, for orientation, uh, this frequency area is done by one speaker system without any effect of a crossover. The crossover are very steep and uh, so uh, between 18 and 24 dB. So we have only a very small influence and crossover. And what is important between mid-range mid -range and tweeter, uh, the uh, radiation behavior is the same. This is why we have implemented a little horn. So at the frequency of 2000 Hertz. That, that's this yeah. radiusing yes. of yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. And, and the same. And the same we have here in our tweeter. You can see it because of the uh, protecting grid, but it's the same shape. So at crossover point, the radiation behavior is the same. That means when you're sitting and listening, you will never have the effect that suddenly higher frequency sound wider than the mid-range. And uh, this is why it matches that much. So uh, therefore, we have designed a baffle uh, made from aluminum because this can be milled exactly as, as it is necessary to achieve this uh, transmission behavior. Just a brief interruption, esteemed viewers. As you may know, I'm Tom Martin, Chief Content Officer of The Absolute Sound. We have a new product. It's on the Substack platform, and we're going to do some interesting things with Substack, first of which is reader questions and answers. Each Monday, readers will submit questions, we'll pick the most interesting ones, and we'll answer the questions on Friday. We'll also have early access to articles and special blogs that don't appear anywhere else. We hope you'll join us. It's only a cost of a cup of coffee per month. Just check on the screen or in the show notes below. Thanks, and now back to the show. Let's talk about the woofers a little yep. bit. They're fairly far off the floor. Is there a reason for that? Mm, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> There's a reason for everything, I suppose, yeah. but yes. Yeah, yeah it, it's of course, uh, it's always a problem uh, placing the woofers at the right point. Many people think if they are uh, placed at the side of a, of a speaker, it uh, has problems with reflections from the side wall or whatever. So uh, having a speaker a certain distance from the floor is always positive because um, we are talking about wavelength here between, uh, let me say, 1 meter 50 to 12 meters, which is uh, radiated by the, uh, by the woofers. And uh, so at that wavelength, they create really uh, a perfect like a hemisphere. That means uh, we don't have any problems that it radiates to the side because those frequencies come from both sides of the speaker and form a sphere which is now uh, yeah, processed into the room. Uh, the problem with the woofer, and this is why we didn't make a line array with woofers, the problem with the woofer is that the energy is pumped into the room. That means we have always reflections, standing waves. This is independent from the speaker design you have. That means we will always cause standing waves and uh, the energy will stay in the room because uh, it will be reflected from the walls or whatever. So uh, building a line array in, in a small room doesn't make sense. It makes sense if you have very big rooms, if you have a concert hall or whatever, then a line array yeah, of- but in a of, real home. Yeah, but in a home not because yeah. that's a problem. So what we did, uh, to yeah, adjust the response of the woofer is that we can uh, adjust uh, the sound pressure level of each, each speaker by switches on the back side. That means you can increase the bass response. or So there's some lower. adjustability for yeah. the room environment. For, yeah, placement it, it, it and depends. So. Distance from the wall, where is it placed? So do we have too much bass response because of reflections? Then we can lower the output or if it, the room is relatively large, then we can increase the output. Okay. And this was necessary because uh, we, we can design such a speaker for a standard room, but of course, this does not exist. <laughs> Most of yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah, it's theoretically. So it's, it's a very good, um, yeah, let me say, tool to really set up your speaker well in the listening room. Okay. Let's finish on one yeah. other interesting thing about the speaker itself. 
what is like what is the cabinet made of? Even how much does it weigh? Uh, this one, 80 kilos. Okay. 160 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's really well, massive. 80 really, but yes. Yeah. yeah. And and what you see, we made the cabinet due to the shape form which we have here uh, out of laminated MDF and HDF. Just taking only a 50 millimeter strong MDF plate is nice, but if you make two plates, 25 millimeters uh, MDF, 25 millimeters HDF, and glue them together, it's much stiffer. And you, have, uh, you, you avoid the reflections and standing waves inside. And then uh, the, they are formed in this way and shaped, milled from the outside before they are lacquered. So they are extremely stable and rigid, and of course relative heavy because the basic material is 40 millimeters strong. Of course we have stiffening parts inside and uh, the, as you can see the, the cabinet is not rectangular, it's uh, just joined to the back side. That means with the side walls are not really parallel to each other, which avoids standing waves as well. And, um, we have special damping material inside because it's a closed and sealed design so that we can absorb a lot of the in energy which is pumped into the cabinet. Uh, and I said final thing, but let me do the final, final thing. Yeah. What is the sensitivity? It's 88. 88. So yeah. pretty good, but yeah. you would want uh, 200 watts at least? Well, what kind yeah, of power yeah, should do you want? Be. No, it's, I mean, it, you have it is, these yeah. amazing okay. amplifiers. But. That's our... A big flag flagship, of yeah. course, but you can drive it with a smaller amplifier, of course. Uh, the sensitivity is one point, uh, the impedance is the second point, and it doesn't have critical impedance, it's relatively linear. So you can use a good amplifier, but nevertheless, as the sound quality is really the, high. And the impedance it, is rated at, I know these are averages, but is uh, it it's, six it's, ohms, four it's, ohms? It's ohms? between, uh, f uh, yeah, the basic uh, ohm is four ohm. Okay. And, and we, go, we do not go lower All than right. four ohms. Understood. So, so th this works. And uh, the, it's relatively linear, so even an amp which is not that strong will not be loaded too much. Okay. That's very interesting. Yeah. And this model is called what? what is That's the, the Solitaire S540. That's the current top model of the line. And we introduce uh, this time, first time, uh, it's a lounge worldwide now here in the US. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. That I was thank great. You. Yeah. Thanks a lot.